Hello, our lesson is about respiratory movements and circulation of air or water. It's for grade seven. In this lesson, we are going to identify the uh, respiratory movements, which are exhalation and inhalation, or we can say they are inspiration and expiration. Also in this lesson, we are going to uh, show the importance of the respiratory movements. Let's start. First, let's recall what we know about the respiration. First of all, we took that all living things, they need the nutrients to have energy and they need oxygen to breathe. So living things, they have needs in order to stay alive. One of their needs is to bring oxygen inside their body in order to stay alive. We have a respiratory system, which is a group of many organs that helps animals and the humans to respire and to enhance to stay alive. So let's see the respiratory system in human, for example. As you can see, I have many organs. All of them, they work together in order for human or animal, but it depends uh, this animal, where does it live? And so we can say which organs the animal has. Let's start with human respiratory movements and circulation of air in human. Pay attention to this picture. We have boy, and this boy we uh, show we are showing the respiratory movements while he is breathing. In the first document, which is A and B, the uh, boy is inhaling it means that he is taking the oxygen from the air and this oxygen enters his body so as you can see we have a movement that is done by his chest or his thoracic cage and that when the boy uh, exhales it means that when he removes the carbon dioxide from his body also he had another different movement for his thoracic cage. How we can see these different movements through the balloons? When the boy inhales, the balloon was deflated. Why? When the boy exhaled, the balloon was inflated. Now, in these two interpretation figure, we can see the difference between the thoracic cage in the inhalation and in exhalation. In inhalation, as you can see, the thoracic cage or the rib cage is raised, while in exhalation it was lowered. And these two movements, they help the boy to breathe and they help the gases to enter our body to uh, get the oxygen and to uh, be removed from our body and get rid of carbon dioxide. Let's see the difference between the two movements, inhalation, or we can say inspiration, exhalation, or we can say expiration. Starting from position of the thoracic cage, yani how does it look? When we inspire or in inspiration, the thoracic cage is raised, as you can see, it raises up. While in exhalation or in expiration in this picture, the thoracic cage is lowered, it gets down. Volume of the thoracic cage in inhalation or in inspiration, it increases. So it, uh, it, uh, it raises or it becomes up while in expiration or exhalation, it decreases. So it goes down. Hell, aspect of the balloon. How does the balloon look like? when the boy inspire and when he expires. When the boy uh, inspires, the balloon deflated. As you can see, it is deflated, it's empty of air. While in expiration or when the boy exhales or expires, the balloon was inflated. This is the inflation. So it is filled, it is big, it's filled with gas. Finally, the path of the air. How does the air move in our body? Does it move out? Does it move in? 
in inspiration, yani in these two pictures, as you can see, the air moves from outside to inside. Yani we are taking the air into our body from out to in. While in expiration, the air is coming from inside to outside the body. So we are removing the air from out, from in to out. These are the two movements that are done by human in order for the air to get into our body and to renew the air in our body and to have always a new oxygen. But this is for you. Now it's the turn of insects and mainly grasshoppers. Look at this picture. I have the grasshopper and we are interested in the abdomen. So this part of its body is called the abdomen. The abdomen moves while the grasshopper is breathing. Our turn or our objective is to see and to examine how does the abdomen of the uh, grasshopper moves. Look at the first picture. The first picture, it shows us the abdomen. And as you can see here, these are lines, but they are not lines. They look like lines, but in fact, they are openings. These openings, we call them spiracle. These openings, they look like our nose. Just like our nose, it enters the air and it helps the air to go outside our body. Also, spiracle is an opening in the abdomen of the grasshopper. So through this opening, the air enters or the air goes out. Now, spiracle is a respiratory opening visible on the bodies of insects. Okay? It performs the exchange of gases between the body of the insect and the air. So through this opening, oxygen gets inside and carbon dioxide gets out. Now let's see how are the movements, how, how are the respiratory movements of the grasshopper. Also, we are studying the two movements because all living things, they have these two movements, inspiration and expiration but it differs in the movements that are happening during these two movements. First of all, position of the abdomen. The grasshopper does not have thoracic cage, so here we have a mistake. Position of the abdomen. In inspiration, it is lowered. You see here, it is down. While in exhalation or in expiration, it is raised. So if I want to draw it, as you can see here, it goes down while here it goes up. This is what do you mean by lowered and raised. So when the grasshopper inspires or when he inhales the oxygen or when the oxygen enters his body, his abdomen will go down, will be lowered because it will be filled with oxygen. While when the grasshopper exhales, so he is removing the carbon dioxide from his body, so his abdomen will be empty. That's why it is raised or it goes up. Path of the air, inspiration, always in inspiration, the air comes from outside and enters our body. And during expiration, the uh, carbon, uh, sorry, here the oxygen comes from outside to our body, while in expiration, the carbon dioxide, it comes from inside to outside the body, whether this body is for insect or it is for a human. You see? So now this is for the grasshopper. Let's move to respiratory movements, but this time it's in water and circulation of water. So we have the fish. As you can see, the fish here is breathing. We have two movements that are happening in this picture. I have the movement of the mouth and the movement of the uh, gill. The gills, they are the organs by which fish breathe because they live in water, so they don't have lungs. All living things that have lungs, they cannot breathe in water because lungs cannot take the water. That's why 
they have the gills. Now let's see. Fish respire by gills. A percula, it's an opening situated beside the head of the fish. So this opening that you see it, or in this picture, it will be more clear. This opening is the opercula. So when the fish breathe, the opercula moves, or it closes, or it opens. With the same for the mouth, as you can see, as you can see in this picture. Sometimes it opens and now it closes. Opens and closes. Now, the scientists discovered that these two movements for the mouth when it opens, for the gaze when it closes, and the opposite way when the mouth closes and the gills opens, these alternating and rhythmical movements reveal that the fish respires. So these two movements, they are evidence that yes, the fish breathe and yes, the fish respires. Okay, so mouth and opercula open and close in a regular rhythm. Regular rhythm, it means that uh, they open and they close alternatively. For example, when the mouth for the fish to take oxygen from the water, this oxygen, it enters through the mouth. So the mouth must open, but the gills will close. When the fish exhale or expire, the mouth will close and the gills will open. Let's see. For example, we made or scientists made experiment on fish to see how does water move inside the body of the fish? Where does it uh, enter? Where does it go? So they bring non-toxic colored water. This is the non-toxic colored water placed in the mouth of the fish. So they put it in the mouth of the fish. They found that this uh, non-toxic colored liquid, it goes directly through the opercula, through the opening here, when it is raised up. So again, this is the opercula. When it raises, as in this case, the water goes out. So this, uh, this was an evidence that the uh, water, it enters through the mouth and it goes out from the gills or from the opercula, which is the opening of the gills, okay? So in summary, in this lesson, we studied three respiratory movements in three living things. The first living thing, it was a human when, uh, it exhale and when it inhales, the thoracic cage moves. When the human inhales, the thoracic, thoracic cage raised, while when he exhales, the thoracic cage decreases or uh, lowers. In grasshopper, we were talking about the abdomen because the opening of for breathing, they are in the abdomen and they are called spiracle. When the grasshopper breathes in or inhale or inspire, the abdomen lowers. When the grasshopper exhales, the abdomen raises or it uh, increases or it gets up. In the fish, the fish, uh, the respiratory movements, they are shown through two movements. These two movements are in the mouth and in the gills. When the fish inhales, the mouth opens and the gills closes, they close so that the oxygen stays in the body of the fish. When the fish exhales, the uh, mouth of the fish will close, letting the water to go outside the gills from here, as you can see also in this picture, taking with it the carbon dioxide. Okay? If you find my lesson helpful and fruitful, please don't forget to like my video and to subscribe to my channel. See you later in a video that includes exercises about this lesson. Thank you.